Hi, this is Trinisha Cottrell, and today I wanted to talk about it's going to be all right. <laughs> so what made me want to talk about that is life has been lifing lately, and I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to say, you know, whatever else, because things could get worse. They could get better. So whenever people try to say things like, oh, it could be a lot worse, I like to think in my head it could be a lot better. And so as I'm going through these storms and these trials and tribulations, it's so weird because this is the first fast where I haven't felt. I mean, I had one day where I was like, oh, it would be nice to eat this thing today. But that was just one moment. I didn't have like a where I was having dreams about it. Like the last time I fasted, I had dreams about the food that I couldn't eat and I was eating it. And I was like, I felt like I betrayed God so badly because I was doing this to be disciplined so that I could be a better steward, so that I could be a better child of God and I could be Christ-like. And I wanted to, the reason why I was fasting last time was because I wanted to grow in my relationship with God. This time I'm doing Lent. So the fast is for Lent. So it's between Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, which is the Friday before Easter. And so as I'm doing this fast, the first, I don't know how many days I'm fasting one thing. And then the last 21 days, I'm doing a 21 day fast of something else. And so that 21 day fast is these fasts that I'm doing are for intentional reasons. Of course, you know, with the Lent on Sundays, you have that cheat day. So I don't know if I'm going to do that with the 21 days or if I'm just going to go 21 days straight and then just do you like be real strategic because, you know, I've really been going through some some things re recently and I, I had a moment of weakness last year and I really have been trying to make sure that I seek God before everything else that I'm I'm putting God before everything that could possibly come in my life. I want to make sure that God is number one. And I got a yes, a yes from God on something, but I don't know if it's a yes because God wants to see if I'm really about that God life or if he's saying yes because he feels like he cares about me. So because he cares about me, he wants me to be happy, you know? But I want everything that God has for me. I don't ever want to settle for something just because I like something. You know, I don't want to be with a person just because I'm interested in them. I want to be treated the way God intended me to be treated. And if the person who I'm interested in doesn't want to treat me that way, then I can't be with them. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter how attractive they are. I wanted to say something from Undercover Brother back in the day. If you've seen that movie, you've seen it. I'm not telling anybody to go watch it. I'm just saying <laughs> the part when he was like flipping down his pants and his his boss was like, you think you're so fine flipping down in your in your, in your handsome little pants. He said it in a whole different way, but I just cleaned it up a lot. And so <laughs> but that's what I thought of when I was saying it. But I really want to be intentional with the things that I choose in my life. And I don't want anything but God. I really don't. And. I don't need anything but God is what I should say, because I want things sometimes that are not good for me. And I think it's just because of my past. I think it's because in the past I've settled in the past. I wanted these things that were no good for me. I wanted to be with certain people who I knew I should have never been with. But for me, I never wanted to be vulnerable. So me being with those people was like kind of like a pr protective, like it was like a self-defense thing. It was like a defense mechanism because I felt like if I was with this type of person I would never have to be in a serious relationship because none of these people are relationship people you know or none of these people are the type of people who are going to want to be in a relationship or I wouldn't want to be with them so it doesn't matter like if they want to be with me that's fine you know like it really didn't feel like it was like a, a real like I would usually be with the type of person who I felt like you know it just it was all wrong. So I knew it would never work out. So I would intentionally be with those type of people because I always felt like I just didn't deserve happiness or I didn't deserve to be with someone who, you know, really was going to be a good person or who really, who I could really end up being with, you know, in that way. And so I would always choose these types of people. And I know you're probably like, that sounds so crazy. I know. But when you're broken, when you're hurting, you really do choose the worst things for yourself because you're not healed. That's why it's so important for us to heal first before we get into any type of relationship. And I, I know you're probably thinking, what do you know? You're single. I know. Listen, I understand that it's hard to take advice, especially as advice about being single and waiting from a person who is single. 
But I think I'm the best person to give that type of advice because I'm content being single. If I was the type of person who just was only thinking about being in relationships, then I don't think I should be the type of person who gives advice. Do you desire a relationship? Of course, because companionship is normal. Wanting to be around other human beings is normal. That's like what every person feels. And some people could say they don't desire to be in a relationship at all. And that's fine, you know, to each his own. But you do desire to have a connection with someone. And so that is normal human. That's that's you being a normal human. Just like when the 19 was out and people couldn't really communicate, it really led to a lot of mental health issues because as humans, we desire to be around other humans. So it's nothing wrong with that. And I don't think that looking down your nose at people who are around you who do desire to be in relationships is for you to say, oh, well, just be good by being by yourself while you're in a relationship. Like if you're in a relationship, please don't talk about just be good being single. Like, yes, it's true. They should be content being single. They should be okay being alone all in one. But that does not mean that, you know, it just, I don't know. It hit different when, (laughs) it hits different when somebody in a relationship comes and talks to you and says, just be content being single. Listen, (laughs) when you get single out in these streets, then you come talk to me about being single. That's how I feel. I feel like People who are in that space who can understand what you're going through are the people that should be having a conversation with you, especially if they are doing it well, especially if they are the people who are content with God. And I, for the most part of my life, I feel content being single. I feel content with God. And sometimes I have those moments where I do desire to be with somebody. And I feel like that's why I should be the person here because I've been through all the crappy relationships. And sorry, excuse my French when I say it like that, but I've been through like really terrible stuff (laughs) in the past. And so if anybody gets it, it's me. And I'm not sitting here on a soapbox looking down my nose at anybody because I know how it feels to be in those situations. I know how it feels to be mistreated. I know how it feels to mistreat other people because you you literally just don't think about your actions. Like I've said something wrong one time in my life and I'm pretty sure there's been every person that said something wrong that they said and they didn't mean it the wrong way, but it came off the wrong way or whatever else. So if anybody could talk to single people who, or people who are scared of being, afraid of being single because they feel like if I'm not with this person, I'm gonna be alone. Yes, you will be alone all in one if you are single. And it's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with getting to know yourself. It's nothing wrong with dating yourself. It's nothing wrong with finding out the things that actually truly make you happy because until you figure out what you actually like, until you figure out what your flaws really are and you actually enjoy being by yourself, how do you expect somebody else to enjoy being around you when you hate being by yourself? That means that you don't even like yourself, but you're expecting somebody else to like you. That logically, I mean, just doesn't make any sense to me. And I know like we don't think about it like that, but I think that every single person, every single and every single person should take a moment and really just think about that. Think about, do you like yourself? Do you love yourself? Like truly love yourself, not just like a, oh, I love myself and you could talk a good game and like you're at home alone crying and you really, you know, you're really falling apart because you can't stand thinking about the past you and the the mistakes that you made and the guilt that's eating you up from the inside out. I'm not talking about that kind of love. I mean, do you really, truly respect and honor yourself? Do you really, truly know like the things that you like, the things that you don't like? Are you trying to make yourself happy? Are you doing the things in now that make you happy instead of waiting for somebody else to come along to do the things that you could do for yourself? Are you really spending that time with God, building a relationship with him and trying to grow deeper in your faith? Because if you're not doing those things, you're not ready for another person. Are you ready to be completely selfless? Because I could tell you in every relationship I've been, every toxic relationship, I don't know how healthy relationships work, but every toxic relationship, it has been all about the other person. And when, and I mean, when you are completely selfish, and I don't mean it like that, I just mean when you are completely selfish, and I'm not saying like every single person, like, Every relationship I've ever been in, all of the people were toxic or all the people were selfish. But as humans, we are selfish. We are a little selfish. So unless you're really willing to die to yourself, unless you're really willing to be selfless, 
don't be in a relationship because it's not just all about you. If you want to be in a relationship where it's all about you, be by yourself for real. And I know I said that in the last video, but I think it's so true because you will have to compromise on a lot of things and you have to be the type of person who's willing to do that. You can't just think, well, this is what I want. I want it my way. It's got to be like this. I need this now. And then the other person is like exhausted. The other person is going through stuff as well. And you're not even considering how they feel. <laughs> oh, my gosh. See what you did there, God. OK, I hear you. God, I literally pray before these videos. I don't know what I'm going to say. I feel stuff on my spirit and I say it and it, I'll have a question and God will literally sometimes have me answer my own question because I'm talking like as if I'm talking to like me before I got in those relationships, me when I first got out of those relationships and me now. So when I'm when I'm talking in these videos, I'm talking, I pray to God first. And then I always want to talk to that that version of me before I love myself, that version of me who's in that toxic relationship, that version of me who's working on self-love and self-care and doesn't know where to start or that person who's at the beginning of their healing journey and they don't know what to do or what could fill that that hole in their soul. And it's only God that could fill it. They're looking for all these things and thinking that they're going to find it in a person and that person can never be God. I promise you, there's there's no person that's perfect enough that will that will ever be God ever. There's nothing. There's always going to be something that you want that you cannot get from another individual because a person can't be everything to you. Only God can be everything to you. So unless you know that, don't don't be in a relationship because no person is ever going to be good enough. They're not. They will never be good enough because they will never be God. You know, and so <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> OK. I'm ugh. I'm at this point in my life where <laughs> I'm at the point in my life where it seems like everything should be falling apart. I'm still smiling. I'm still faithful. I'm still hoping for God. I don't know what's about to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I always never know. But now I, I definitely 100% <laughs> don't know what's going to happen in my life. And everything, like the things that I thought that would be there are gone. The things that I thought that I needed are gone. And I'm at a point in my life and I pray for this. I, I This is so funny. When you pray and the pastors will say, you got to be real like specific with your prayers. Not only that, but when you ask God for something, when you tell him you're about that life, you're going to be tested. And you really need to know what it is that you're asking for when you pray. Like, for example, this is the example that the pastor gave. And I think it's a really great example. He said, when you're praying for peace and then your relationship is over and you're like, I, I only pray for peace. And then now I'm I'm without this guy that I was with and I don't understand why we're not together. And like you're all worried and everything about why you're you're asking God why you're not together. But you have peace in your life. You did not specify how you wanted peace. You didn't say to work on the person or work on you didn't weren't working on yourself to try to be a better person so that you could have the type of relationship that that was more peaceful. God was saying that you being with that person will never give you the peace that you're looking for. But you prayed for peace. You didn't pray for a breakup. But God gave you exactly what you asked for. So you have to be really careful because the power of the tongue and when you're calling on God's name is so powerful that you really have to have to know what it is that you're that you really need what you're really asking for. Like God knows what you need. We don't know that. Sometimes we think we know what we need, but we ask for what we want. And God knows what we need. So like I could do a prayer and say, God, please let me be with Bob. <laughs> I don't know why Bob is always the first name that pops into my head. But OK, there's a Bob out there that's like, I don't even know her. <laughs> so listen, it's not about you. You don't I don't know you either. I'm just using you as an example. <laughs> and so. So Bob comes along and it's just like, oh, I just really want to be with Bob. And God's like, no. Or he allows you to be with Bob, 
Bob is horrible. You thought Bob was going to be this great person and Bob is horrible. And you're like, what in the world? Like, why? <laughs> why did I pray for this? But you prayed for it and God gave you exactly what you wanted. And now you're with this guy you can't stand because you prayed for something. When you were just seeing Bob as this attractive person, you didn't know who they were on the inside. So you got exactly what you prayed for. That's what I'm saying. Like, when we are praying for stuff, really know that God is going to give you what you need, not what you want. If I say, God, please give me the person that you have grace for me, who is appointed for me. The person that you see that you like that's looking like they looking might not be the person that God gives you. God might give you this guy who you never saw coming. Most of the time, it'll be a guy that you never saw coming. You'd be completely content in your life. And God will be like, you know what? This is the guy. And you will just be going on about your business. Sorry, my nail broke. And I just didn't want to walk on, be on here with like a little side nail. So I try to like peel it. So it, it looks like it's like I just filed it. But I just did that in this video. <laughs> and so you're asking for that. And God sends you this person who is somebody that you didn't even see coming. You're thinking it's going to be it's going to be Rick over there. Rick you know, looking like he's looking and he's talking like he's talking and his his actions when he's out and about. It's just you're just like, man, if I could be with this guy, I feel like I would be content. I mean, I'm content with God, but I feel like he would make me happy and I could make him happy if we were together. And God's like, listen. Do you want happiness or joy? Now, Rick can make you happy. But this guy that I have appointed and grace for you could bring joy to your life. Because it would be coming through God, because this is the guy that God appointed to be a part of your life. And you keep on trying to figure out why it just seems like something's off. It just seems like, yeah, you're happy, but you know, deep down that there's something more that you need. But you you wanted to settle for happiness instead of joy. Just be mindful of your prayers for real, because when you ask God for it and you're really about that God life, God will give you what you ask for. So know what it is. Really think about what it is that you are asking God for. Like if you want peace in your life, you might not have that job anymore. <laughs> that job might be stressing you out <laughs> and God might be like, look, if you want peace and joy unspeakable then I'm going to have to remove some things that are not bringing joy to your life. The things that are heavy on your heart, the things that, that are not good for your mind, that are not allowing you to walk the way that I need you to walk, to be Christ-like and be in the areas that I need you to be in. Without that, I, I can't allow you to have these things in your life. And, and you're thinking, oh, I lost this. I lost my, my man, my job, my all of the you start listing things that you you're without, but you forgot that you have joy now. You forgot that you have peace now. And honestly, I'm saying this, and I hope nobody takes it the wrong way. The happiest, most joyous I've ever been in my life is when I have peace. When I first was in my single season, when I first started healing, when I was first working on myself. I was really super focused on God. I was, you know, in Bible study. I was praying. I was reading the Bible. I mean, you know how when you first read the Bible and it's kind of like, and it's a little boring. People don't tell you that, but it's a little boring at the beginning. So you have to keep pushing through it because it's the adversary trying to tell you not to finish it because he doesn't want you to know what's in the Bible because he wants you to stay. He wants you to stay stupid. I know I couldn't think of any other word, but he wants you to not be knowledgeable of what's inside of the Bible. And so any way that he can to make you fall asleep, because you need to probably read the Bible in the morning if you fall asleep reading the Bible at night, because that's your la the last bit of energy that you have. You got to you got to give God your full energy so that he can give you the full blessing. You can't expect God to come through like he comes through when you're giving him the bare minimum. You don't want that in a relationship. Don't give it to God. You know what I'm saying? And so <laughs> and so you I was reading my Bible. I was doing I was doing the do like I was woo, when I tell you I was down for God. People who are like religious and stuff or like Christians, they like to say I was on fire for God. I was on fire for God. Like I had to put a little like twang, like a little 
swag on it when I said it, but you know what I mean. And so, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm really, I was really like in that God life and I still love God. I'm still focused on God. I'm still reading my Bible and every, and everything, but I could feel a little bit of like, like this, like I could feel a little spiritual pull and I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm serving more. Like I'll try to give more of my time to doing stuff that I know will help fill my spirit because I know it's not just for me, it's for other people. And it's something about helping other people that really, really feel feeds my soul, you know? And so I try to do stuff like that more often. And then I try to do stuff like reading my Bible and then I read my devotional and I read my, um, daily bread. So that way I have like a few different things. So I'll do my daily bread in the morning. I'll do my devotional at lunch. And then at night I'll read the Bible. And I know y'all are probably confused because you're like, didn't you say not to do it at with your last energy? No, I don't do it at my last energy. I do it before I really like, before I do these videos, usually I read the Bible before I eat, before I do other stuff, I'll read the Bible then. I don't read it in bed at night. I did that at the beginning. You know, I would sit there and I was getting ready to watch a TV show or something. My one show that I allot myself every day. And so, and some days I really don't get a chance to watch TV, but I try to watch one TV show a day so I can keep up on my, my people rescuing people and stuff. Like, like I love the hero story with like, uh, I don't know. It just brings me joy to see other people helping other people, you know? And so, <laughs> cause I love helping people and I really do care about people in general. So I try to make sure that I'm being intentional. And so, <laughs> and so I'll read my Bible like before the show or now I read it before I do these videos or something like that. So I can stay focused on God and I'm not just, not just giving God my last bit of energy. And then sometimes I'll switch it up and in the morning I'll do my grateful, thankful thing, which I do every single day. And I have an appointment with God. So while I'm doing this fast and I don't know if I'm going to continue to do it after Lent, but I have an appointment first thing in the morning, whether I go to sleep late or early, I set an alarm and I intentionally meet with God every morning. And in the morning, I just tell God how thankful and grateful I am. And I sit there. And I spend like a couple minutes with God and I just allow him to speak to me or just to be in his presence. You know, even if he doesn't say move here, do this or you're going to do this and then you're going to get this. Like, I don't expect anything from those meetings. I just expect to be in God's presence so that I can build a closer relationship with him. You know, so I do that in the morning. And then sometimes he could say he'll say go back to sleep or sometimes he'll say stay up and work on making journals, making a book, you know, writing a book or you know, doing something with my business, coming up with a new strategy, um, doing something on Facebook or one of the other social media sites, YouTube. Maybe I'll, I'll join a community and I'll, I'll put my name in different places. So that way it'll help expand my business and I'll be able to work with different people, something like that. Like whenever God tells me to move, I'm moving. And usually when he tells me to move, it's like a connection happens right then. And I'm like, I would have never even thought of doing this at this time, at this date. I would have never even assumed that I would be able to work with this person out of nowhere. You know, it just kind of happened because I was being obedient to God. And so I do that. And then when I usually when I get to work and I take a lunch break, I'll do my. I'll read the Bible and I do my devotional usually before I leave. So the devotional is like I have this book. I don't have it in here, but it's a little small book. It's got like. 40 pages in it. No, it's 45 pages because it's got like the opening, the title and all that stuff. But every day in there, it has day one through 40 for Lent. And it goes from, I want to say the first day of Lent was Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. So it went Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday isn't in there. So on Sundays, I'm in in church anyway. So I'm reading, you know, I'm going through and listening to the pastor and things like that. And so I, <laughs> I will do that. And then once I read that in the morning, then when I'm at lunch on my lunch break, I go through and I read the Bible because I want to make sure that even though I'm feeding my body, I'm feeding my soul at the same time. And it's so funny because I have this joke. <laughs> People are going to judge me, but 
whenever you do like communion or whatever else and it has bread, but whenever I have the bread communion in the Bible, I say it's the it's the body, the blood, and the word. And I know people are going to be like, that's so corny. But I know that's just kind of what I do. But <laughs> I'm always corny like that. Like people really. So there was this one guy a long time ago. I, I'm going to jump back into my schedule and stuff. I promise. But there was this one guy and he said something. And I was talking about giving like we were doing like a side hug or something like that. And I was just like, oh, yeah, it would be nice to do that. And then the guy totally took it the wrong way. And I totally meant that he just is a great hugger, not anything else. <laughs> but it was just so funny because I was like, I'm so corny. He just like probably assumed like she's definitely saying something totally different. But I was totally talking about a hug. I was not talking about anything else. Like I wasn't even thinking about that. But anyways, <laughs> so that's not even, I don't even know why I had to drop that in the story. But anyways, <laughs> after I do that and I I read the Bible on my lunch break at night, I usually pray or I thank God or I'm, I'm listening to sermons. I'm listening to, to gospel music all day anyways. Like I have it playing real low. I have Dappy T, key, T, P, Dappy T keys playing piano, instrumental gospel music. It's like instrumental yeah, gospel music that it's like really soothing and relaxing. So if you don't, you haven't heard it, you need to subscribe to this guy. Like I, I know I'm like shouting out somebody else on my channel and I don't have that many people, but I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about whoever needs to hear this message hearing it. Not everybody, you know, it's nothing wrong with growing my channel. And I think it would be great if more people could hear it, but that's not my goal. My goal is to help the people, whoever it is that God has appointed to watch this that needs the message that needs to know that it's going to be okay or whatever else you know those are the people not the numbers and sometimes I'm not gonna lie and say I don't think about oh you know well it's not that many people maybe it doesn't matter sometimes I do feel like that but then I know that I listen and seek God and God hasn't told me to stop and he's told me to be here so I know I'm here for a reason and so as long as God is telling me to be here and to do this, I'm going to continue to do it because if I can help even one person, that's more than the zero people that I would have helped without doing it, you know? And, and also you never know where somebody is. And I, I might be the type of person who they might be like, okay, well, she seems like she's, you know, all right. And she, she's made a bunch of mistakes. So I'm making mistakes now. So maybe I could hear something that she's saying and it will help me, you know? And that's really my main goal is to help other people to speak life into them, to let them know everything is going to be OK. You know, that even though life seems hard, even though things aren't working out the way that you want, even though you thought that your life was going to be a certain way and it didn't turn out that way, everything is going to be fine. Put it in God's hands and let him work everything out for you because he can handle it. God, God is literally everything. He could do anything exceedingly and abundantly above all else that you could ever ask think or imagine there's nothing in this life that you could ever want for <laughs> and I say that and people are like didn't you say need not want listen <laughs> when I was growing up my um you know people in my family who are older and things like that when you were taken care of when you know your family provided for you and things like that and you never had to like go without or something like that or whatever you never knew that you had to go without because it just seemed like everything was fine then they would say oh she could she doesn't want for anything so when I say that I'm playing on those words I'm not saying it like God is giving you what you want even though what you want ends up becoming what God wants for you it's all about God providing the things that you actually need for your life but that's just something that I say I'm really saying God gives you what you need but you could want for nothing because you really could want for nothing. There's nothing that you when God gives you everything that you need, there's there's nothing else necessary in your life. Like you got food, you got clothes, you're breathing, you got blood in your veins and God is always providing for you, even when you can't see how, even when it doesn't seem like everything's <laughs> everything is going to work out. God is always working things out for your good. 
And sometimes if you're like me, you like to jump to conclusions ahead of things. And God's like, I never told you that. And I'm like, you're right. You never told me that. It was just something that I wanted. And I hope that it would work out that way. But I understand, you know, I, I understand for real. Like my heart hurts a little, but I understand, you know, and <laughs> and God's just like, yeah, I know it sucks right now. But I have better. That things will be better. You don't have to settle for this because I could give you something that was a lot more, a whole lot more than what you're willing to settle for. You know, and it's so funny because I did a video and I was talking about how we should really consider what someone else needs because it'll help us in the long run, because it'll help someone be a better person when you're speaking life into them, when you're when you're talking and affirming them, when you are saying positive things to them, it'll make them at work work better. You know, in your friendship, it'll make them be a better friend because they'll know that you appreciate them and in a relationship. And it's funny because I have this person in my life who's a friend and they will. I so I always try to speak life into everyone. But instead of me being like, oh, yeah, I was going through this because sometimes we have things going on in our our life and we just kind of start talking about ourselves, you know, because it's just human nature. But I really have been trying to be intentional this year with just being like, hey, you know, what's going on with you instead of just jumping in? Because sometimes when me and my friends don't spend a lot of time together, I'm just like, there's so much that I want to tell you that's going on in my life. And, you know, (laughs) and then I forget that they have their own life, too, and they're going through things as well. So I can't just make it all about me. I have to make sure I'm being intentional and asking them what it is that's going on in their life as well. So I've been really trying to just be like, hey, girl, you know, how how's everything going? How is this? How is that? You know, how are you really doing? Is like what I try to how are you feeling? I try to be really intentional about doing that because I don't want to just make it all about me because, yes, I live life as well. But I want to be there for the people that I care about, you know, and I want them to know that they are important to me, that they matter and that I'm not just there for a selfish reason just to get something out of that relationship with them. And if I'm doing that with my friends, if I'm doing that with my family members, if I'm doing that at work, then eventually when God sends someone in my life, I can be that way with them as well. And I think that God allows you to be single in certain seasons of your life because it really does prepare you in the best ways for the thing that he has for you. Because if I hadn't got to this point, if I had just been like, oh, I'm just going to talk about the stuff that I'm doing, like I'm already working on myself. So I could just, you know, if I feel comfortable, I'm just going to talk about you know, myself, like, listen, (laughs) it's nothing wrong with, you know, having a conversation with someone, but don't just make it all about you, you know? And so that's what I really had to learn. And I learned, you know, and I'm really glad that God taught me that lesson because now when I do get with someone, I won't just be like, I'm going through all these things. I'll be like, Hey, how are you doing? Because I really do care about the person and I want to make sure that they're okay. And Sometimes we don't realize this, but when we actually really care about somebody else and we're not being selfless and we speak life into the other person, they kind of give you what you want anyways. Like, and I'm not saying it like you should use it like a tactic tactic or be manipulative or anything like that. I'm saying like, just really, truly be a genuine human being, treating people with common decency and cur- and like respect, like, you know, like. I don't want to say like, obviously, but you know, like it's, it's one of those things that's like, we know that we should be doing that, but most people don't do it. And so I want to intentionally do that. And while I'm that way with my friends, while I'm that way with my family members, they kind of just pour into me, you know, they, they like give it right back. I guess you could say you reap what you sow. I'm sowing good things. So I'm getting good things. I don't know, but really it's just like, The things that I really, truly desire that I want because I'm being intentional, because I'm 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 really being genuine about caring about somebody else besides myself. They literally are just like, hey, how are you? And most of the time they might not even do that. But now they they really care about you. They really are considering your feelings and it's not just about them. And it's so that's like one of the coolest gifts that God's give me, given me in this single season is being able to see like the shift in relationships like that, you know, because when you genuinely are pouring into somebody else, it's kind of just like they don't mind pouring back into you because you're not just being selfish, you know, 
And it really made me feel good on the inside. Like, oh, wow. You know, I want to do this all the time. But, you know, I always I know it has to be like a healthy balance. And I do have to make sure that I'm still, you know, having a conversation and I'm not just letting it be all about the other person all the time because I want to make sure that it's an equal friendship. But it's also not all about me. So finding that healthy balance, you know, but it really made me feel good because I genuinely was concerned about the other person. I genuinely wanted to make sure that the other person was okay, And I wasn't thinking, oh, if if I do this, then this person is going to give me this. Then this person is going to do this. And, you know, I really wasn't thinking that at all. I was just thinking, you know, if this was me, this is how I would want to be treated. I would want someone to really be concerned about what I'm going through. And then my friend comes back and says, hey, how are you doing? You know, how is everything going with you? Like genuinely really trying to seek to understand how I'm feeling and if if everything's okay with me. And that was the coolest thing ever. That was really awesome. Should I say awesome? That was really great. I thought that was really cool, you know, and so. People will surprise you if you let them. They really will. So <laughs> I know we did a lot in this video and I did not talk about the thing on the video on my paper that I said I was going to finish up. I'll probably finish it in tomorrow's video, Monday's video, if God puts it on my heart to do a video that day and it'll be about greatness and Mm, I don't think that's what I'm going to call it. I'm probably going to call it something about success, like being successful or something. I don't know if God puts it on my heart. If one of the sermons that I listen to don't speak to my soul and, and, and it feeds something else that God says, this is what it needs to be, you know, but I try to be intentional. And if God puts something on my heart, like that was something that God put on my heart that day. But the video ended up being all about the one first topic instead of all three. So I try to do the bullet point thing. You know, when I do it with sermons at church and the pastor's talking and he elaborates on things and I feel something in my spirit and I can kind of speak to those things as well. I can do it then. But when it's like during the day, I'm feeding my mind so much knowledge. You don't even understand because I just don't like to pour trash into my system whether it's food or words or, you know, what I'm watching or whatever music, like I try to make sure I'm being intentional with, with my ear gates, with my eye gates. I want to make sure that everything that I'm feeding my soul is good. I don't want to just empty something into it, enter a vial into it. You know, I want to make sure that it's, it's something healthy, that it's something that's going to be prosperous, you know? So when I'm watching things on TV, it's something that's, that's people helping people. It's, it's inspirational. It's something that I would aspire to have or something that I would aspire to do or, you know, it kind of motivates me or or something like that. When I'm listening to something, listening to things, I'm listening to maybe an audio audio book or I'm listening to a video as it plays or I'm listening to gospel music. The gospel music is feeding my soul because I can relate to a lot of that those songs and it allows my spirit to be lifted and my, my soul to be fed. And then when I'm listening to audiobooks, that knowledge is pouring into me and, you know, people, the people perish because of a lack of knowledge. I never want to be the type of person who's not always seeking to learn and educate myself and to be able to grow and expand and evolve in the way that God intended me to. So always try to be intentional with those things. So <laughs> every time I'm doing something, I always want to make sure that I'm pouring into myself, you know, that. I'm gaining as much knowledge as I can. So, <laughs> so in conclusion, <laughs> everything is going to be okay. I know I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to other people out there. The people who feel like they want to give up on believing that a relationship is for them, especially if God told, told them that they are going to be in a relationship or the people that feel like they don't see how anything's going to work out. And it just seems like it's thing after thing It's if it ain't one thing, it's another, you know, they just feel like it's a hit after hit after hit after attack, after attack, after attack or test after test after test. And it just seems like you can't even take a second to catch your breath because so many things are happening in the world around you. But I want you to know that it's going to be OK. Everything is going to be OK. 
I promise you that the type of God that I serve <laughs> is the type of God who would never let you go out like that. He did not bring you through all of these things just to leave you where you are. You have so much more to offer the world. You have so much more to give. There's so many more things that God wants to do in your life through your story. If you let him let your mistakes be your testimony so it can help someone else. Because you think that testimony was just for you, but it was for other people. I don't know what's happening. It was not just for you. It was for other people. It was so that you can inspire other people so that you could help other people. So that you could be everything that God intended for you to be in your life. So that generations to come can see the things that you you went through so that that start line for them will be so much further ahead. Everything, everything that has happened in your life is for a reason. For the reason that God intended it to. You might have chose some things, you might have made some mistakes, but if you know like I know, God can change any situation in, in a second, in a minute, in a day, in a year. So while you think that your story, your testimony, your, your trials, your tribulations, your mistakes, your missteps can't be used, I promise you God can use everything if you let him. Don't allow anybody to tell you who you're not. Always remember who you are. Always remember that God got you. There's nothing that my God can't do. Nothing. <laughs> when I tell you nothing, like, I could sit here with the things that have been taken away from my life. I could sit here and really be just like, oh, I don't know how anything's going to. I know God and that's enough. I don't know anything else, but I know God's going to work it out. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know who, but I know it will. And so that gives me peace. Most people in the situation that I am right now would be freaking out. They would be like, what am I going to do? What is this going to happen? What is this? Like, they would be like, I don't have this. I don't have that. Like, listen, we don't do I don't have lists around here. We do the win list. We do the grateful, thankful list. The things that I do have. Because if you start thinking of things in lack or scarcity, or you start thinking of the one thing that you don't have, Eve, Adam and Eve, <laughs> then you're not going to be able to see the blessings that God is giving you. And I could say, oh, yeah, you know, if you were in my position, you would feel like blah, but I don't know how you would feel. But I know if you have God in your life, it gives you a whole nother level of confidence, another level of just hope and faith. It just I can't even explain it. And <laughs> God, God is just so amazing. I'm not going to allow anything that's been taken from my life. I'm not going to allow anything that's been taken from my life to be used as a reason why I'm lacking something and a reason for me to not be able to see the miracle. The miracle right now, even though I don't have those things that I thought would be important in my life right now, I mean, they, some of the things are necessary. But listen, even though I don't have those things, the miracle is I still have hope even without those things. The miracle is I still have faith in God even without those things. The miracle is that even though there's chaos around me and things aren't working out the way that I wanted them to, I know they're working out exactly the way that God intended them to. And I still have hope. I still have faith. I still am seeking God. The old me, before I knew God, before I rededicated my life to God, I would have just been like, I give up. I don't know what to do. I would have really been running like I'm a runner in the past. And so not like marathon, but like when it comes to difficult situations, when it comes to serious like relationships, when it comes to, you know, having getting close to people. I was the type of person who just ran from those types of situations. And I was in a 15 year relationship, which makes no sense at all. It was like a whole contradiction. It really was. And so so now that I have God and I have faith and I have hope, I'm not that person anymore. I don't want to just run from those things. 
I want to embrace those things, especially if it's a blessing from God. I don't want to allow Satan to come in and tell me what he thinks I don't deserve when God is blessing me with it. If God is gifting me it, that means that he thinks that I deserve it. And even though I'm not worthy of those things, even though, you know, God is full of so much grace and mercy that I don't even know how he's he's even going to be able to give me these things. I don't even know why he's giving me these things. I trust God. And I know that even if I can't see why. Is for a reason. And I'm going to accept it all. I'm ready to receive everything. I'm ready to receive anything that God has for me right now. I'm ready for all of it. And I don't feel like I should just give up and not accept it because of anything that happened in my past. Because God already, he already forgave me. I already repented. I've already worked through those things. I've already worked worked through that childhood trauma. I've already worked through that toxic relationship. I've already worked off all of those things inside of me that were broken. And does it mean that they're completely gone? No, but they're healed because of God. And if you trust in God, everything is going to be okay.